Hello and welcome to Phoenix LiDAR Systems demonstration of Spatial Explorer 6. Uh, this is our newest version of Spatial Explorer with new functionality and today we're going to be highlighting the LiDAR Snap 4 module. LiDAR Snap is used to do point cloud calibration as well as trajectory optimization simultaneously. So we're going to go ahead and open up Spatial Explorer and in work offline mode we're going to go ahead and uh, go to Open File and navigate to our PLP. We're going to be using a Scout32 system today uh, with an A6000 onboard camera. So here with our PLP, our Phoenix LiDAR project file, we're going to open this and select a project datum, which we'll use NATAV3 2011. And upon loading, we'll see the real-time trajectory as well as previews for all of the uh, camera events. And just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to turn off those previews and make sure we load in our post-process trajectory. Since the trajectory already knows our datum, we just need to feed it its epoch, which happens to be 2010. And you'll see that pop in as blue. Since this is the trajectory we're going to be using for LiDAR Snap, uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this navigation file and leave us just with this. And if we just navigate to some spot on the tra trajectory and play our data, we can see, um, just do a quick spot check of our data. And if we uh, allow our camera to follow this, Let's pause and we can come in and see our UAV here with all the components. So our antenna, our LiDAR sensor, at the center of navigation is our IMU, and then the camera out front. Now we've seen our hardware in real life. We can go ahead and get rid of this point cloud as we want to make sure our point cloud is actually created from straight lines only. And to do this, we're going to use our uh, CTS file here and snip it into intervals. Now, many of these dialogues have user inputs, uh, but have been uh, optimized to, uh, for their default values to work in the majority of the cases. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And we see our straight lines are optimized and just to uh, minimize the amount of data that we need to turn through, I'm going to go ahead and remove these three diagonal lines here. So I can use the arrow keys to cycle through. Get rid of this one. And that one. Now that we have our project area um, complete in the intervals to remove any turns or unnecessary data, go ahead and investigate our LiDAR sensor to make sure our settings are um, appropriate for calibration. If we jump to our calibration tab, you can see that we don't have any calibration values in here, only our uh, calculated translation values, or finely measured, rather. And in our processing tab, let's go ahead and reduce our downward field of view to, let's say, 90 degrees. And we'll limit our minimum range to 10 meters to avoid any atmospheric, uh, inter uh, interference or um, maybe a LiDAR sc scanning a, a leg of a landing gear. Now we have our LiDAR set up and our, our intervals isolated. We can go ahead and create a point cloud. And we're going to go ahead and utilize those intervals we just created. Now that we have our point cloud created, I can go ahead and zoom in, and I'm going to remove this trajectory from visual just so we can see a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a, a second view so we can make a cross section here to take a peek at our data. And you can see that we have um, quite an uncalibrated 
on boresighted system. But let's go ahead and change that. Uh, and in our point clouds, before we get into this, uh, to update attributes from the point cloud to ensure that our um, various attributes have proper histograms for visualization, let's go ahead and update attributes. All right, now we are ready to do LiDAR snap and calibrate our point cloud. So let's go ahead and go to our point cloud in the edit tab. We're going to run down to LiDAR snap 4. And here, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, most parameters are optimized for the majority of situations. So we're going to be using the optimization of rotation as our translations are all already precisely measured. We'll allow it to use three iterations and uh, to default everything else. And the intrinsics that we're going to be correcting are scan angle and tilt angle offsets for the system. Our trajectory, uh, we're going to be utilizing the bias model and uh, maybe give it two, yeah, three iterations to um, refine itself. And as this is a post process trajectory, so it has been um, processed and um, utilized with differential GNSS corrections from base station. Uh, we still are going to allow this to optimize our Z uh, parameter, as Z tends to be the uh, biggest source of error in any GNSS situation. And if we had ground control for this situation, we could um, in input that and utilize it in our reporting. But for now, we're just going to let LiDAR Snap do its thing. Once LiDAR snap is complete, a cloud calibration report is populated uh, in the rover folder as well as displayed here. We have our uh, normal orientations of uh, observations used for calibration as well as the histogram correspondence distance errors. And that is held within your rover folder. And you can see now uh, our point cloud is very well aligned. If we display this by Instead of elevation, let's go GPS time with the beginning of our flight being blue and the end being red, with everything in between. You can see this cloud is very nicely aligned uh, throughout all of its flights, flight lines. If we close this and turn off our newly populated optimized trajectory, you can see this cloud looks very nice and ready for all the next steps of Spatial Explorer 6 modules.